Hi, this is Almir, we're staying with Cape Town Emergency Medicine and this is part one of our two video series on basic operation of a manual, monitor and defibrillating device. Today we'll be talking about what the machine is for, basic safety and basic operation. A manual monitor defibrillating device is a machine that can be used as a cardiac monitor. It can deliver defibrillation shocks in a patient with cardiac arrest and a shockable rhythm. It can be used to perform synchronized cardioversion in a patient with a perfusing tachycardia indicator. And if fitted with a pacing module, it can be used for external pacing in a patient with symptomatic bradycardia. The first thing that we should talk about are basic safety principles. Please remember that a manual monitor defibrillator device, when charged, can deliver a shock with enough energy to be dangerous or even fatal and safety is of paramount importance. The first thing to remember is that paddles should either be on the machine or on the patient and never anywhere else. Paddles should never be flapping around in mid-air. Paddles should never be held in the same hand. Paddles should never be placed on a surface unattended. Any of these errors may result in electrical arcing or unintended delivery of a shock to yourself, a colleague, or a patient who doesn't need it. That's why paddles are on the chest or on the machine. The second important thing to remember is that while a shock is being delivered to a patient, no one else should be touching the patient or anything that is being touched by the patient to avoid accidental electrocution of a bystander. Also, there should be no high flow oxygen or oxygen washing across the chest or in the area of the patient. The oxygen source should be removed during the delivery of the shock. About a meter should be enough. The easiest way is to take the oxygen source and if you have it an arm length away behind you or away from you, you should be safe. The last thing to remember in terms of safety is to use electroconductive gel. Electroconductive gel can be placed on the areas of placement before you remove the paddles. Alternatively, once you have removed the paddles for the first time, an assistant can quickly apply some gel and the paddles can then go on the chest. Now that we have spoken about what the machine is for and reviewed the basic safety principles, let's talk about the basic operation of the machine. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is to simply switch the machine on. It's logical that there should now be some way for the machine to read the cardiac electrical activity of the patient. If we look at the lead select button here, it's telling us that at the moment the machine is set up to use paddles to sense the electrical activity. When using paddles, please make sure that you know how to remove the paddles on your machine. In this case, they're tilted out and lifted up. Your assistant can apply electroconductive gel and the paddles are then placed on the chest. The apical paddle is placed at or around the apex of the heart, the left lower chest as close as possible to the mid-axillary line. The sternal paddle is placed on the right upper chest just below the clavicle. Apply firm pressure to the paddles and make sure that they have good skin contact. If we look at the monitor now, we can see that the paddles are sensing the electrical activity of the heart and that that activity is normal sinus rhythm. An alternative way to sense electrical activity of the heart is to use the three lead system bundled with the machine. You can apply red to the right, green to the spleen, and what's left over to the left shoulder. At the moment, the machine is still set on paddles. Press lead select to come to lead number one and you'll see the electrical activity now monitored by the leads. If you cycle through the leads, lead two and lead three, you'll have different readings of it. If you go back to paddles now, you won't be able to sense. But if you were to take the paddles out, even while the leads are attached, you can still sense. This makes this kind of setup quite versatile. If we cycle back to lead number two, just to mention the gain button. The gain button is like a volume button on how big these complexes are being displayed on the screen. If I take gain down, my complexes are displayed as tiny. And up, they can become quite big. 
this is important because if you are confronted with a rhythm that looks like a flat line, please take up your lead to maximum or your gain to maximum to make sure that you aren't missing any small complexes. Another button that you may see on the face of this machine is the sync button. We'll talk about how to perform synchronized cardio version in a separate video. And that's it. Basic use of a monitor defibrillator device.